All right, I get this question all the time, and it's how do you break in your boots? And there's so many different ways that so many people try and tell you to do it. I watched a video the other day of a guy filling up the whole entire boot with water um, so he can moisten the boot and break it in. And it, it's a it's a terrible method. Do not do that. Don't try any crazy method to, um, to break in your boots because you'll ruin them. So when you buy your boots, they come with a they come with a condition in them and a polish. You have to think about this skin like your own skin. This the skin that sits on top of your of your boot um, is a is a thin skin that is literally the the skin of the animal, right? So this thing needs to be conditioned. It's supposed to have fluids going to it. So it needs to be conditioned. Um, you know, it's just like your body. If you were to just soak it in water in the pool for a long time, you get out and you're going to be all crinkly and moist. It's not a good method because what happens afterward, and you know if you've ever been in a chlorine pool, is that you're dry. Your skin's cracking and you have to moisturize it. And that's exactly what's going to happen to your boot if you try a method that's like, let me just dump a bunch of water on it. Let me walk through a swamp or something and try to get these things moistened up. That's not true conditioning. And what's going to happen is when you put your boots up over time, um, a lot of people don't have as many boots as I do. But if I was to put a boot up like that, it would literally dry rot. I've had boots dry rot before because I'd be in like muddy pastures and the oils from the boot would, would fall out basically. And so now you just have a dry boot that you're storing and it's going to crack. Um, now you can bring it back to life sometimes with, you know, more conditioning. So if you've done a method like that and you know your boots are dry, just go get them professionally um, conditioned and polished and it might bring them back to life. So that's why you don't want to do that. Now, the way that a boot is made, right, is like I said, this is the skin of an animal. It's either cow, ostrich, whatever. It's a thin layer of skin. And like I said, it needs to be conditioned. So the outsole of the boot is a stack of leather. So it's one, two, three. That that one runs all the way up here. The, the inside of this boot is another uh, stack of leather, right? Like right here. There's another stack of leather that's running into it. On a boot that has a built-in insole, this one doesn't. So you can see, you can literally see that stack of leather. So this one doesn't have a built-in insole. It just has the stack of leather inside that is the floor. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that's the floor of the boot on the inside. Now, when you're working with a boot that has a stack of leather... Um, like a leather insole inside of it, like this one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But like that right there. So that's a built-in leather insole. So instead of just being the floor of the boot, there's another stack. So like another ply of leather that goes onto it. See, this is just a, a two stack right here. And then that goes into the floor of the boot. So... And then a lot of people think that the heel of a boot is wood, but it's also a stack of leather. It's This toughens the boot. It makes it more sturdy. That's the hard part of the boot. This right here, it, it doesn't break in. It's it's literally skin, right? Like the, the only thing you can do to loosen this is condition it. If you put water on it, it's going to dry it out and make the situation worse. But this is the tough part of the boot, and this is the tough part of the boot. The more stacks of leather that there are, the tougher that outsole is going to be to break in. So on the back here, what people think is wood sometimes is one, two, three, four, five, six stacks of leather. Some of them are less, some of them are more. But this is going to be hard on your heel unless they add some additional cushioning to it. Um, I have a boot by Tony Llama that has a cushioning in the heel built into it. But... We'll go back to the boots that are built in leather. Let me see if I can find a good example of it. Um, this is gonna be easier to see. Now, this isn't a great um, example of it, but this is a worn boot. And I don't know if you can see inside of there, but there's an indentation in that built in um, sole. And it's not, 
it's not something like this, right? There's an indentation and a built-in leather sole there, which is where your foot starts to mend and mold into the boot and shape the bottom of the boot, which is why over time you're going to get holes in your boot and have to replace the sole because the inside of a leather sole is meant to mold to your foot so you have the right pressure points. Now, the way that that happens is through the weight of your foot, the oils of your foot, and the sweat of your foot. So, there is a truth to having moisture in the boot to break it in, but that moisture is not water. That moisture is working its way from the inside out to the bottom of the sole. So, the only way for that to happen properly is to wear the boot over time. Putting water in it or doing some extra method is not going to work. The only thing that I can recommend when you're working with a true boot, and what the only thing I can recommend is maybe use like a lot of moisturizer on your feet or something like that. That might be the only like real cheat code. But what you really want to do to get a boot that's going to be comfortable for you, and a, a lot of people have their reasons for buying a boot that has a built in insole, right? I mean, I own some, you know, some of them were given to me. Um, so that that's the floor. That's going to be uncomfortable. There's no extra soft leather padding in there for you to build an insole. This is all you have. The problem with this is this is not going to get. This is always going to bounce right back. So when you get in a boot that's brand new and your foot is squished up against this, the stack is hard to walk on because it's not really flexing because it's it's not worn on your 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 body is not really pushing on this and wearing it in this is not going to give you any give at first and it's it's going to take a lot longer for the boot to break in because your foot is not really connecting directly with the leather of the boot so what you have to do if you have a boot with an insole in it is take the insole out that's why a lot of my boots that have a built-in insole, I take the insole out. You take that out, you wear a thicker sock, and you walk on the actual leather of the boot. When you're walking on the leather of the boot, it's going to, like I said, your, your oils, your sweat, your foot, the weight of your body is going to push and make those pressure points in that boot to where it starts to work in this leather that's on the stack. It starts to work in that leather, and you start to kind of push down on it making it thinner and easier to move. That is what makes the boot uncomfortable. It's not, it's not the skin. It's not um, that it's not really moist. It's the fact that this is a new stack of leather. It's tight and you have to mend the, your foot to the bottom of that. Now, what I prefer whenever I shop for a boot is a built-in leather sole, right? That's what you want to look for. You look for a built-in leather sole. And the only way to break this boot in is by wearing it. It takes about a week of wear of, you know, like I'm talking like days of work. Like you, you go work six hours, wear the boot for like six hours for a week. And you will start to build. See, that's brand new right there, right? You see how there's no indention in there. There's no, it's still a flat surface. You'll start to build an indention in that boot on your pressure points. Again, you could see them here. If I was to be able to pull that leather insole out, you would see literal, like you would see your toe print, you would see your pressure point of the ball of your foot, and you would see where the heel is indented there. It literally, it gets darker and you can see and you can feel the indention of this boot. You literally feel the curvature and the indentions that your foot makes into it. Um, otherwise, it would just be flat. But that's what you wanna get. You wanna get a boot that has a leather insole. If you want something comfortable, that's gonna last, that's gonna break in, almost guaranteed to break in. If you get something with a built-in leather sole, your foot is gonna break that leather in at some point. It usually takes about a week. Um, now, it's harder in colder temperatures. If you're in a warmer climate and your foot is actually sweating and creating oils in the bottom of that boot, it's gonna break in faster. But again, that skin right there, not really gonna break in. What you're trying to break in is the outsole. So pouring water into your boot and it coming out and expanding into your actual skin, drying it out is not the answer. 
I hope that answers all your questions. Thank you guys for checking out this video. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comment. Please like and subscribe, and y'all keep cowboying on.